Hey everybody, I think I've got an interesting one for you today. We're going to be talking about rank X, and specifically the fairly common situation where you end up with a tie in a critical portion of your rank X results. And so we're going to be talking about um, how do we break ties in rank X through the use of custom tiebreakers. We'll talk about what are the characteristics of a good and bad tiebreaker. And then at the end, close with a, a caution about using random functions to break ties. Um, so I want to start with a feature that I started a couple of videos ago where we think about kind of what each DAX function does and what job it would have in real life. So for rank X, we've got something that evaluates based on a set of criteria and then pulls the elements out of a group in order according to that criteria. So I think I know what job rank X would have in the real world. For the college. Maybe Lars Shepherd. and then Slick and then Tony. And the old English Elsa. And Elsa. So for today's example, we're going to take our rank X judge and use that applied to a hypothetical sales contest. And our sales team is kind of down these days just because of the pandemic and sales are low. So we're going to run a contest, try to boost their morale and uh, liven things up a bit. So here are the prizes we're going to offer for the sales contest. As we're adding a little something to this month's sales contest, as you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. So a pretty big gap between the prizes for one and two. So that means we, we better get this right. So we can take a look at our, at our sales team and just drop our total sales measure in. And let's take a look at our, at our rank X measure. And this is just the basic rank X configuration, just what has one value in front of it, just so that we don't end up ranking the total row. And what we've got is all of our, our salespeople ranked on the basis of total sales in descending order, and then skip for ties. And we'll see in a minute that that skip is not going to help us break ties. Let's take and drop this measure into our matrix and see how things shake out in terms of our sales contest. So we just drop that in here and let's sort based on rank. And what do you know? We end up exactly tied at the top. So it's, it's not been a great month for sales, so we can't afford to give away two Cadillac Eldorados. So we're going to have to break this, uh, break this tie. And we've got Jasper and Max at the top. As I mentioned before, if we change this from skip to dense, let's let's take a look at doing that. So what skip does, if we go back and look at our results, is we've got two ones that are tied and then the next rank is three. If we were to go in and change that to dense, and then go back and look at our results. We'll see that it doesn't it doesn't affect the tie itself. It just affects the rankings after the tie. So instead of starting with 3, now Martin is number 2. But we really want for this contest the top 2 and we need to differentiate between them. So going from skip to dense in this sense doesn't doesn't help us at all. And so what we need to do is develop a custom tiebreaker and as I mentioned up front, there are two characteristics of a good custom tiebreaker. The first of which is it needs to meaningfully differentiate between the tied elements. So it needs to be some factor that separates the two that are tied, or it could be more that are tied. And then the other thing is it needs to not alter the rank order of the non-tied elements. So in thinking about this case, there are a lot of different candidates for good um, tie, custom tiebreakers. So we're, we're looking at total sales here. We could look at number of sales. So say, okay, who's been, who's been out hustling the most? Who's been drumming up the most, the most customers? On the flip side, we could look at maximum sale, say who landed the biggest account, or we could look at something like average sale. 
So on average, who's landing larger accounts among the the two the two top who are tied? Um, for this case, what I ended up using was median sales um, to look at kind of that that measure of who's landing the bigger accounts. But median is better in my view in this case in that it's not as influenced by outliers at either the high or the low end. So it gives that better measure of central tendency in this case. So for for this example, we're going to use median, but we could use any of the other ones. And there's there's a whole number of other metrics we could use as our as our custom tiebreaker. Um, so what we want to do is take a look at how we would craft that that tiebreaker. And there's a fair amount of DAX here, but the concept is really pretty, pretty simple. That what we've got here is a variable that's our second level ranking. Um, and we've got the has one value construct, and it's basically the exact same rank X pattern that we used before. But instead of using total sales, we're using median sales. And then from that, we take that the result of that variable. And what we're doing here is really the crux of the matter is that because we've got whole numbers in our total sales, we've now got the the first and second decimal places to play with in terms of using that that range to break our tie. So what we what we can do here is take that ranking divided by 100. That then takes it beyond the decimal point. So it, it differentiates between the, the top, but not in a way that would affect any of the, the ones below the top in terms of overall ranking. But we're not quite done yet because if we just divided the ranking by 100, we would have the, the top ranking would get a 0.01, the next ranking would get a 0.02. And what we want to do is flip that around so that the top ranking gets the highest score on the tiebreaker. And so what we do here is basically within that has one value construct, we take one minus the rank scale divided by 100. And in that way, we've got the highest score for the tiebreaker at the, the salesperson with the highest median down to the lowest. And we can, we can go into our, our table and, um, and drop that rank X tiebreaker in, and you'll see exactly how that works. So again, right here, we've got, we've got kind of the range of tiebreakers. And you'll see that in this case, Max and Jasper don't have the highest scores that actually Martin Perry, if we were to pull out the, the median sales here, he's got the higher median than either of the two of them, but that's not the primary ranking factor. So he's, he's out of the running and the key is differentiating between these two. So then what we can do is look at our total sales tiebreaker, which is just simply adding the, the rank X tiebreaker to our total sales. And then what we can do from there is just run the rank X on that total sales tiebreak number. And we'll see here if we sort that now we've got exactly what we want, which is a full one through n ranking with no uh, with no ties. So that's that's the way we can do it. Um, in in a nutshell, um, if we have even a second or third tie, we can go out to that third and fourth decimal place by dividing by a thousand, and continue to add tiebreakers on as needed. But in this case the likelihood of having the same median and the same total sales is infinitesimally small. So all we needed was one, one custom tiebreaker. And I wanted to close by talking about random, that there are some cases where um, simply the use of a random generated number or a random generated decimal might be sufficient to break the tie. So it might be meaningful if you were in a case where let's say you wanted to do a focus group of a random selection of your top 20 salespeople. So if you had ties within that, within that group, it might be reasonable to just pull some of those out at random. And 
The problem is that both within Power Query and within DAX, random functions behave really strangely in different ways. And particularly when you put the, the RAND function within an iterating function, you don't get what you expect. And I'll post this, um, this PBIX, and you can try that out on your own and see that just by taking our initial rank X, and if you were just to add total sales plus RAND, which returns a random number between zero and one, um, you don't get what you think you're going to get in terms of the the final ranking outcome. So there, there are definitely ways to use random as a tie break, particularly in that um, sampling or focus group scenario. And I'm actually going to dedicate a deep dive video to that because random behaves so strangely in a number of Power BI context that I think it's worth a, a deeper look. So anyway, that is that is it for custom tiebreakers. Um, I hope you found that useful, something you can you can tuck away when the situation calls for it. As always, if you got something out of this video, please be sure to throw it a like and subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV as we'll have a lot more content coming out in the near future. So thanks as always for watching and congratulations to Max and Jasper for the win in this one sales contest.